How you doing guys? Malik over at Modern Pond. We're going to do a video today on flounder fishing using artificial lures. Uh, if any of you guys know, my brother and I, Mark, we're avid flounder fishermen. We fish all the time. Uh, we catch a lot of flounder, uh, both rod and reel and gigging. Uh, we've used every method, artificial, live bait, uh, fly rod, uh, you name it. We've pretty much tried it for catching flounder and we've been real successful doing it. What I'm going to do today is give you guys a breakdown on what we use as far as artificial goes in order to catch flounder uh, in different some different conditions. I'm going to go over some of the tackle that we use and uh, give you some hints and tips on, on trying to catch those flounder because they are definitely delicious. Alright guys, I'm going to give you the breakdown, um, the, the cliff notes to flounder fishing real quick. First of all, scent absolute most important thing about fishing for flounder. If you don't have scent, you're not going to catch many flounder. Uh, that's just what we found. Uh, scented versus unscented, you're going to get 5 to 1, 6 to 1, 10 to 1. Um, if one guy's got scent and the other one doesn't, scent is very, very important. That's why most guys fish flounder with a dead bait or a live bait or a cut bait of some sort. What we found, a lot, since we prefer fishing artificial and we like catching flounder, you have to do one of two things when you're fishing for flounder. You either need to use a scented bait, something like a gulp or a DOA shrimp. Um, the gulps work phenomenally well. That's the four inch pearl white swimming mullet. Um, that thing right there has been a killer for us. I mean, it has just been you know, redfish trout. Um, you know, murky water, sunny days, that's the color right there. Uh, stained water, sunny days, this is really a, a killer, killer bait. Uh, as far as color goes, generally speaking, we like white, light, white, light, natural, and occasionally contrast. The red body silver flake with the white curly tail from H and H Coastal Tackle. This is an awesome bait for flounder. I think we've probably caught the majority of our flounder on this bait right here. It is unscented. It's just a regular plastic bait. Um, they're not real expensive. Uh, we, we use them all the time. And what we found is the best scent uh, for any kind of inshore for us is this brand called, right here called Procure. Uh, it is, uh, they come in a bunch of different flavors, uh, shrimp, mullet, menhaden, inshore, blue crab, uh, I don't even know, they got, they got a bunch of them. Uh, the nice stuff about this, it is almost like glue. It's really sticky. You put it on the bait. It's there for like 15, 20, 30 casts. You can still see it on there. The, it has This stuff has a hint of red color to it. Uh, when you put it on there, it you can see it there. You can feel it. It's kind of greasy and sticky. So don't get it on your hands and, and try to be uh, careful not to get it all over your tackle box because it is a powerful scent. It's stinky. It works. Um, I'm sure it's made from uh, ground up fish parts or whatever. Uh, it is really effective as a scented bait. We use uh, this Procure even on scented baits like DOAs. DOAs have some uh, bait fish built into the plastic and we still put it on there and, and it increases our catch rate even on DOAs. Uh, in the springtime when the shrimp are popping everywhere this guy right here in clear water is a killer. It's a natural, kind of a clear with a red flake uh, DOA shrimp. This one right here is a, a quarter ounce. I'm sorry, this is a half ounce one right here. That The DOAs have some of the best action on the market for a shrimp imitation. Absolutely killer bait. This right here in slightly stained water, um, you've got the glow back with the gold flake uh, DOA shrimp in a quarter ounce. Caught a ton of fish on these as well. Not only have we caught flounder, yeah, flounder trout, redfish, black drum, uh, skipjack, you you name it, we've caught them on DOAs. Everything, everything eats shrimp. And these are very, very good imitations. Uh, this right here, another kind of variation of this one, uh, we use this more on really sunny days when you need that, that whiter color. Um, maybe sunny days with slightly stained water. I got this, this particular setup's got a Rockport Rattler jig head, quarter ounce Rockport Rattler. Uh, with kind of a flashy red eye and uh, chartreuse tail with a pearl body. When you run these grubs, guys, you want the, the hook coming out uh, close to the tail junction. 
and you want to use a relatively wide gap hook so longer shank so that it comes out towards the base of the grub body part not you know when it you know want to mess with the action of the tail but you want it as far to the back as you can pretty good wide gap in there as you can see this one's got a pretty wide gap uh, as far as the DOAs go they're already set up with a hook so um, the hook position on these work real well we haven't had any issues with how those run uh, other thing guys when you're fishing for flounder they are bottom feeders your bait needs to hit the bottom it needs to go slowly if it need, when it does hit the bottom it needs to drag maybe pop and drag uh, it needs to stay low in the water column for as long as possible that's where you're going to catch the flounder um, you'll also catch redfish and trout everything looks at the bottom and uh, uh, the flounder is on the bottom looking up but they see everything because they're basically on the bottom so these guys right here if I had to build a tackle box for flounder fishing only I would fish those four lures 99 percent of the time and the way we tie these on is we pretty much fish a uh, spinning tackle for flounder we use spinning tackle braided line fluorocarbon leader uh, if you don't like braided line um, tough you got to use braided line fishing for flounder they have a very tough jaw the uh, if the the mono has too much stretch in it it, it does not facilitate hook set you don't want to be